Hey guys, it's Graham. What's cracking? I recorded this earlier and then for whatever reason it didn't actually record, so I'll keep it short. Uh, today's April Fool's Day, but I don't do April Fool's jokes. I'm just not that good at it. Don't care. So this is not an April Fool's video. This is an actual book about an actual thing that's happening next week. Uh, the book is by Steve Ruskin. It originally came out in 2016 ahead of the 2017 path of totality solar eclipse in North America. Uh, but it's about the solar eclipse that hit North America in the 1870s, specifically 1878. It passed over the Rockies and it was a huge deal. And it's a it's an event that is of particular importance to Steve Ruskin because it happened in Colorado Springs where he's from. And he is a, an astronomer. He's got a PhD and all of that stuff. So he wanted to write this book to bring attention to a very particular event in American history that didn't get a whole lot of attention. I guess this particular eclipse was pivotal to uh, establishing certain practices in astronomy today. Apparently back then, they didn't, um, they didn't think that it made a difference to put a telescope at lower altitude or higher altitude, and there were plenty of professional and amateur astronomers who dragged telescopes all the way to like the top of Pikes Peak and other mountains in the Rockies to uh, to take pictures and look at the um, at the eclipse that happened that year because the Rockies happened to be in the path of totality and they were able to pretty conclusively prove that it's better to do these things at a higher altitude where there's less debris in between you and the uh, the object of your interest. When the last one hit in 2017, I was working in Salt Lake City, and the path of totality was several hours north in Idaho. I think we were in like the 65 to 70 percent range. So I noticed it getting darker and feeling a little bit cooler, and I noticed our shadows on the ground looked a little bit funnier, but um, wasn't really able to get anything beyond that. This year, the path of totality is hitting the Midwest, especially Cleveland, where my brother lives, and... Uh, I'm a little bit bummed that I'm not in a position to take a road trip out there and check it out, but Oklahoma City is uh, is closer to that path, and uh, I've already gone to the store and bought the special sunglasses for my, my family so that we can watch it. Um, I'll be at work when it happens, but I'm, I'm going to stop and take a break and see what I can get as far as like a glimpse of it, footage of it, whatever. But anyway, this book was a really good primer, not just on paths of totality in general, but on that particular year's uh, e eclipse. And since it's short and it's uh, not very expensive, I don't know what the print book or the Kindle book is going for. I grabbed the audio book and it was, I don't know, like around three hours. And right now it's on sale for Audible members. It's like five bucks. It's not very long. So with the, uh, the eclipse being a week out, now is a great chance to to check this out and just learn a little bit more about this particular astronomical phenomenon and this particular one in in 78 that changed a lot of what we know about astronomy i think the other really fascinating part of it was the idea that um, back in the 1870s people thought that there was another planet in our solar system and the the path of totality would make it possible for them to potentially see it because they thought that it was between Mercury and the Sun and uh, the planet was called Vulcan and this was obviously about 80 or 90 years before Star Trek so uh, that wasn't the reason why but they were able to disprove Vulcan's existence among other things but it's a really cool historical snapshot at uh, the way that people competed for tourism in different Colorado Rockies towns and so on and so forth and uh yeah i gave it about i think i gave it four stars by the time i got to the end fascinating little book check it out and stay tuned to the channel next week because uh, if i'm in a position to do so i'll probably even go live and just take my tripod with me in the truck and and uh pull over and maybe catch a live stream if i'm if i'm able to hopefully the weather is amenable to that we're supposed to have partly cloudy skies next monday and uh, i'll just hope that the uh, the cloudy part hits after the eclipse is done so thanks for watching check out the book till next time drive safe see you out there